hi shivam uh, thanks for uh, joining us here thank to you thanks to you from all plugin india users and plugin india youtube uh, watchers uh, so uh, uh, last time we talked we you mentioned that you are in china right now and um, you have a company that uh, works in the field of electric vehicles helps people and you know other uh, companies uh, set up business uh, opportunities uh, in china get uh, work with business opportunities in china um, can you just tell us a brief about yourself what is your background and what is your company doing sure uh, my pleasure kedar so uh, i came to china in 2016 uh, and i started working in the lighting industry in 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 marketing and business development uh, so when i came here i saw so much uh, electric vehicles around me the two wheelers and the four wheelers and personal mobility was uh, shared mobility was getting popular so we started working in in this space in supply chain side of the electric vehicles where we started some research on the right manufacturers of different components that goes into electric vehicles and uh, we started working around same time last year and in february 2019 we uh, registered the formal uh, business where now we are offering supply chain services to electric vehicle startups or or resellers who wants to who want to buy from china and use the components uh, from uh, into their own products uh, so we ha- we offer services like finding the right product right supplier uh, uh, some quality inspections uh, third party audits and shipment inspections and that, all those supply chain services that would help every day almost it feels like china is making news in the field of electric vehicles and we hear so much and we read so much and you know it just seems exciting like not too long ago china was not there on the radar of electric vehicles and it seems like number one country today um so our readers are very curious um, can you just describe what is a current situation on roads of china today how many electric vehicles you see of what type and you know two wheelers four wheelers what's going yeah, on sure. yeah actually it's pretty exciting here so uh, almost uh, 100% of the two wheelers uh, in china which are used for personal mobility are electric right now uh, we see what 100% of two wheelers are electric <laughs> yeah exactly so uh, a- apart from a very f- minor fraction of luxury motorcycles everything else for personal mobility two wheelers is electric wow pretty amazing yeah so uh, as i was saying so uh, apart from that so the personal shared mobility where we have shared e bikes shared scooters is also on rise we see a lot of uh, these companies coming up and apart from that in four wheeler space you see Uh, a lot of uh, adoption happening uh, uh, companies like didi which we know is a cab hailing service uh, has around if you order a didi today you is like 40 50% chances are that you get a, a electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle and there are there is one more company uh, called salsa which is a, also a cab hailing service owned by the geely group itself so they have their own uh, ev sedans uh, which are flying sharing service apart from that for personal usage uh, uh, i would say a lot of you will see a lot of n- green number plates on the road where these vehicles are electric uh, and even the buses uh, you must have heard about the shenzhen news recently the 100% of their fleet is now electric uh, for buses so yeah it's pretty big here and i think it's pretty impressive like all two wheelers electric all three wheelers electric most of the buses going electric and you know many cars were going electric in near future so that seems just amazing and uh, you know just a question so since you are there for two years um what is your experience of actual air pollution have you seen you know like a noticeable change or it's it's you know more or less same not too much bother anymore what is it uh in terms of pollution i think uh, uh the pollution has gone down maybe because of other factors also the government is working on uh, closing down the factories closer to the cities so they are moving it outside to uh, uh, outside regions uh yes the vehicles would help uh, but uh, it would need a lot more uh, number of vehicles to be electric in terms of the bigger vehicles 
uh, when i say bigger vehicles because the cars uh, recently uh, it's between 3 to 4% the total number uh, or percentage of electric cars in china is between 3 to 2% which is which is pretty high as per uh, any other country but still uh, needs to go up uh, a lot more to, to make an impact on the total I, I see i see okay um i think the overall statistics is pretty impressive and uh, you know what do you think china is doing differently compared to other countries to accelerate it to you know so fast yeah uh, i think uh, i think there are two two major reasons which which we can categorize the whole the whole scenario here in china one was the the willingness from the government so the policy making was pretty fast pretty efficient in terms of uh, coming up with policies which could aid the oems uh, like for example the the incentives that were uh, introduced initially for for bigger vehicles like four wheelers was uh, for 100 kilometers mileage there was a certain category of incentive or rebate uh, we would say for end user then it was slowly raised to 150 kilometers so the benchmark was now 150 kilometers below 150 kilometers the incentives were taken off after a couple of years 150 kilometers uh, uh, mileage for per charge per charge right now uh, i think the new policy would come up where this would be raised to 200 kilometers per charge so you see the the government policy is designed in a way that they are pushing innovation in terms of improving the efficiencies of these people i see and the, is there any is there any like you know uh, incentive to go from petrol to electric uh, you know like what you described seems to be the incentive to improve electric vehicles itself right so uh, the incentive was uh, because if if the price is 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 brought down by the by the incentives by the rebate the users would compare the price of the vehicle they will see that the the range anxiety is no more and the other other side of it is that the the network of charging infrastructure that is being established in china is the biggest right now you uh, according to the numbers it's like 120000 charging piles which have been installed already in china so now wow the range anxiety is not there and now the, the user knows that if i am on the highway i will always find a charging station at certain uh, distance so all of that and the prices have slowly coming down as the batteries are uh, getting more affordable so now the uh, uh, the adoption is obviously going up that's pretty impressive so it's like you know combined uh, effect of uh, uh incentives as well as the setup of charging infrastructure has moved china to uh, has helped china to move rapidly in in this direction um so the you know just coming back to the incentives so you know we have often discussion of two incentives supply side incentive and demand side incentive so demand side incentive where you get some rebate like you know you buy a car of whatever 10 lakh rupees and government gives you like 1 lakh rebate and then it actually cost to you is only 9 lakh so that mm-hmm. creates demand but then is there any supply side incentive also that you know encourages companies to produce more electric vehicles because so, we saw some good example of that in united states you know the tightening fuel standards are uh, really helped companies think in the direction of more and more hybrids and more and more electric um, in last uh, you know two decades or so right so uh, there is a very interesting uh, uh, policy that the government here was working on uh it's it's a credit system to be explained in a very uh, layman term it's a credit system where each oem or the manufacturer would have to achieve certain credits so how you achieve credit is either you make cars more efficient so their average in in gasoline cars goes up or you make uh, them electric so uh, uh, what happens is that the the oems has to achieve certain credit score if they don't achieve it annually they will have to buy the credit score from a company which has overachieved like for example if if i need to achieve 10 and my uh, competitor also needs to achieve 10 i got 8 and they got 12 so i would have to buy two from them otherwise the, com- the company would be penalized by the government 
so those were the kind of supply side uh, uh, policy making that that are also pushing the oems to make better or uh, more efficient cars or electric cars i see i see okay so that seems like supply side incentive demand side incentive and charging infrastructure these three are the critical components of you know china's push in the direction of electric vehicles definitely and as i mentioned from the uh, public transport also so now the government the city level governments are completely uh, uh, changing their fleet into electric like shenzhen did now my city i am in ningbo also is uh, slowly uh, upgrading its fleet to electric so that is also for public transport side and we discussed already from the retail user side that's that's fantastic and and you know um, you must be making trips to uh, other nations and especially to india which is your home country you know um, just for like a comparison uh, what is your observation and what is it that you know over here uh, we can do or take some steps to um, you know push for electric vehicles yeah uh, definitely i see a lot of uh, difference in in the uh, policy making system now uh, uh, as compared to india in particular china is very swift in implementation uh, there is a different form of government so obviously the the implementation is in a different setup but so like for example uh, fame 2 was supposed to be uh, published in mid of uh, 2018 which is now pushed to uh, next year so see the the amount of uh, time we spend on implementing policies obviously uh, is is slowing down the progress of adoption rates and how the industry grows also one more thing i have noticed in particular is that the oems in india are holding their space whereas the oems in in china are towing the line with the government and they have they have understood that they can be, take a leadership space in the ev Uh, EV segment now it's an opportunity for them, but OEMs in India are holding their space to to control the ICE territory that they have. So that those are the major differences which I feel uh, uh, are are different when we see how India is adopting electric vehicles versus China. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's true. We often you know have had that feeling as well that the OEMs in India could do more to move in the direction of electric vehicles and. Uh, um i will let's hope that uh, happens in near future so what are your uh, thoughts on the future of electric vehicles so you know where do you see uh, just based on what you have seen and heard and you know learned over there in china as well as other places um the future in let's say 5 years from now 10 years from now yeah uh, very uh, interestingly uh, china has this target of 2025 where they want uh, their whole uh, uh, vehicles on the road out of that 25% should be electric that is their target in 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 personal uh, vehicles so i am sure it's 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 little ambitious because right now they are touching 4 4% but uh, by the rate that they are growing uh, i'm sure they can achieve it so uh, i think the the governments across the nations in europe in india uh, usa they need to adopt certain uh, 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 short distance uh, targets so that they can work towards them and 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 and, and move the industry along with them sounds great sounds great so thank you so much shivam thanks for joining us here from me and from my plugin india team and all our plugin india users and um, you know we hope to uh, we hope to hear more news from china and uh, we hope all this information helps uh, our users to understand uh, the picture better and you know hopefully some people in the policy circles are watching this as well and uh, help, helps them to get an understand uh, to understand uh, you know some aspects and um, thank you overall for joining us here and all the information my pleasure kedar thank you thanks a lot for your time Thank you.